Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you have had a good week. I hope you're starting a great weekend. This is a subscribers chat class everybody. So to join the chat, you just have to subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's free and it's very useful. Uh, welcome Anna. Hi Nerd. Hi Das. Hi Success Brown. Hi Quest Air. Nice to see many of our subscribers here. Hi Fuang, Angel, Anahita, Domenico. Good to see our members. Students, in this class we're looking at an IELTS Task 1 specifically for the academic IELTS. And when I say Task 1, I mean Task 1 writing. It's the first task of the writing section. It takes 20 minutes. This was a question that was sent to us by one of our premium students uh, regarding a table. Uh, the table describes the way uh, people spend their leisure time in India. This was a question or a question similar to a question on an IELTS exam uh, just recently. And of course a lot of people are curious about how do I write a task one expository essay for a table. Now if you're having a tough time following, don't worry, we will go through this task one step by step. Welcome back Carolina and Amra, our chat moderators. Lovely to have you here with me today. Uh, students, um, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Visit us there. For general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. These are the websites that power these live classes. They are our websites. We use them daily to help teach students. This is our academic IELTS website here with the blue background. Click this big red button to join the premium version of the IELTS course and you are good to go. One time payment lifetime access. We're an IDP affiliate. We are a British Council partner. We're an IELTS test registration center. I'm a certified British Council agent. You are in excellent hands with us. Now uh, when you click that red button you can use the discount code DRIVE9 uh, for an additional 10% uh, discount off the regular price. Prices are different in different countries to encourage everybody to do well in the exam. General IELTS, gieltshelp.com. If you're looking for task one writing general IELTS materials, definitely check out the general IELTS version of the website. Students, uh, lots and lots of goodies there to help you. Okay, all right. Uh, so use that code DRIVE9, don't forget. Save yourself that extra 10%. Uh, the apps are Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help in your app stores. Uh, use the apps, link them to the website. You can purchase through the apps as well. You only need to buy the course in one place. And for those of you who would like to see another uh, task one bar graph question uh, that's on bar graphs and not tables, uh, check out this blog on the website. It's a free one that's for bar graphs. Okay. Um, Instagram is IELTS underscore AE help and uh, G IELTS help. We've got lots of great videos for you on Instagram. I just uh, put one up there yesterday uh, giving you last minute tips for the speaking section. Um, and uh, for questions, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. Both of those uh, email addresses will get you uh, some answers. Okay. All right, uh, students, uh, right now, task one. Tomorrow, we will have speaking part two for members and speaking part three for everyone where everybody can join the chat. So lots of speaking in tomorrow's classes. Um, and we've got this video for you. Make sure to check that out. Okay, uh, this video is a speaking video that we put up not so long ago and it's a good one. So definitely uh, check it out, um, watch it, it's great. Okay, let's get to this uh, task one question for the day. Uh, we're going to do this together. I'm going to explain what to do, how to do, and uh, I will get you to help me. So I will get you to share your English, your vocabulary, your sentences, your ideas. Task one of the academic IELTS is an expository essay, okay? Okay, so expository essay, it seeks to uh, explain or expose ideas. It 
in a logical, systematic, and objective uh, of way. So um, the reason for this uh, in the academic IELTS is that you do a lot of expository writing in university and in work and in professional life. Um, it's objective. So um, here, for instance, when we look at this table, uh, we can see that um, you know there's a lot of uh, teens uh, who are watching uh, TV and videos in India and you know they might say well it's because so somebody might write so teens love watching um, TV and videos uh, because there are so many amazing movies and uh, TV series made in India you can't do that okay uh, even if it's true you can't do that why because there's no information in this table that shows that there are a lot of amazing TV shows and movies being made in India. It doesn't exist. So you can't include that information. In task one, your only job is to report and interpret what you see. Okay. One of the common mistakes um, in the IELTS that gets low scores is um, the candidates simply just report. Okay. So here's an important tip don't just report what you see do not just paraphrase and give information about the highest and lowest these types of essays score around a band six when they are well written okay so don't just do that okay so don't just like paraphrase the question and then say you know like the most was teens watching tv at 1100 hours the least was group exercise and sport for 60s and 70s um people in india with no hours uh, so these types of essays tend to get a band six if you don't make spelling and grammar mistakes, okay? Uh, to get a high score, keep this in mind, okay? To get a high score, you need to interpret data, okay? So state interesting uh, comparisons and contrast. Now, I haven't looked at this table in detail yet, but I will give you an example of this, all right? So um, let's take a look here, all right? So what would be some interesting interpretation of uh, data? Um, well, we can see here that 1,100 hours per year by teens in India is spent watching videos. And we can see that people who are over 70 spend about 1,000 hours hours those two are comparable then we can see that people in their 20s and 60s spend 650 which is comparable and then people in their 30s 40s and 50s seem to spend significantly less half to a third that now we can't say it's because they're busy with children and work maybe it's true but we don't know that however the interesting interpretation here is teens and geriatrics seem to spend two or more times the amount of time on TV viewing as people from their 30s to their 50s, okay? That would be an interesting interpretation and that would get you a high band score, okay? That kind of data, right? So for example, um, it is interesting to note that teens and those 70 plus in India spend two or more times the hours watching TV as the other age groups at 1100 and 1000 hours respectively. 
okay? So that's an interpretation of data. Interpretation of data is college university level writing. It's not high school level writing. That's the difference between simply reporting versus interpreting, okay? Does that make sense, everybody? All right? All right? So Cypher says, Indian teenagers tend to watch more shows and videos. See, Cypher, that would be your simple band six level writing. Interpretation is what I'm showing you right now. Does that make sense? Okay. Anahita, we'll look at those in a second. Right now, I'm just explaining to people what the goal of good task one writing is. Okay. I see some thumbs up there and some people are like, yeah, okay, that makes sense, right? So uh, simple reporting, band six range versus interpretation, band nine or seven to nine range. Okay, I see a lot of flying hearts. So I'm guessing people are realizing, oh yeah, that makes more sense, okay? So for those of you who need those bands seven, eight, nine, you need to look at data from that perspective of interpreting the data in English, not just reporting it in English. If you're okay with just getting the band six, that's all you need, then you can do simple reporting. Just pay really careful attention to grammar and vocabulary, because if you make mistakes with that and you're just reporting, then your score is going to be lower. Okay, Carolina says thumbs up. Good. I'm happy to see that people understand what I'm saying. It's super important. You're going to see that in the essay. So step number one is um, for, for task one, you should always start with task one. Task one is basically a recipe. Okay, step one, two, three, four, um, and so on. So you just simply go through the steps. Step one, read the question carefully. Uh, paraphrase it and add details from the table to write the introductory paragraph. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it together. And so the following table gives information about the time spent on various leisure activities in a country according to age groups. Reporting, report the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Okay, let's write the introduction based on that. Okay. So the introduction, again, remember, it's not just a paraphrase. It's a paraphrase with some added information from what you see. Okay. All right. Yes, no contractions, Cypher. Absolutely. All right. So uh, let's do it. Let's uh, take a look at this. Let's write. Okay. Now this is general. We don't have the year. So we're writing mostly present tense, right? So this table provides data on the number of hours, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, the table provides data on the number of hours seven different age groups ranging from teens to over 70 years old spent on one, two, three, four, five on six different leisure activities. Now, some people might list those here. That could be a good idea. I'm going to just leave that for the body paragraph. So on six different leisure activities uh, in a given year in India, okay? So this table provides data on the number of hours, seven different age groups ranging from teens to over 70 years old spent 
on six different le leisure activities in a given year in India. Um, and here I might do a little bit more for my introduction, especially if I have good quick writing skills. It's minimum 150 words, but good high band essays are going to be closer to 200, 220 words. Okay, so I'm going to add that extra level of writing for that band eight, band nine. Okay, the age groups uh, span a decade each and the um, pastime uh, behaviors vary from watching TV uh, to group exercise and sport. Okay. So here I'm paraphrasing the question. Here's the original question. The following table gives information about the time spent on various leisure activities in a country according to age groups. This statement does not tell us how many age groups. It does not tell us which country it's in. It does not tell us what leisure activities or how many. So I'm realizing that, you know, I need to add that information in the introduction here. Okay. So this is my introduction. It's basically a paraphrase, just giving more description or definition to each of those points. Okay, everybody following me? All right. Uh, Rupinder says, my tutor says right in the past. R Rupinder, um, that's, I don't mean to discredit your tutor, but that's kind of silly. Uh, it depends what you're writing about. Okay, you only write about this in the past if it's in the past. If this is data from 2005, then yes, but we don't know that. So this is present tense. It could be right now. It could be 2023 data so far. Okay, all right. So we don't know that. All right, there's no rule that you need to write in the past tense. Always use logic. Okay. So this table provides data on the number of hours, seven different age groups, because there's seven, right? Teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70 plus. Uh, ranging from teens to over 70 years old, spent on six different leisure activities in a given year in India. The age groups span a decade each, roughly, right? Teens over 70 could be more, but could be less, but we don't worry about that. We worry about the main ideas here. And the pastime behaviors vary from watching TV to group exercise and sport. All right, now we have a clear introduction for our reader. They know that, okay, there are some passive activities like watching TV, and there are some active uh, ones like group exercise, group sport. Okay. Now again, students, I encourage you to write with me. So don't just wait for me to give you this content, write. I will look at your writing. I will make corrections when I uh, think that is necessary. And you don't have to be writing about the same information or the same part of the essay as I am. So I'm going to be looking at the overview now if you're still writing the introduction. That is absolutely okay. Here is a good example by Amra. Okay, this is Amra's introduction. Amra writes, the spreadsheet reveals data about the number of hours spent on six pastime activities by seven different age groups with a decade apart. Seven different age groups with a decade apart, each with a decade apart each a decade apart, ranging from teens to over 70 years old in India. Okay, Amra, very good. So Amra's order of the information is a little bit different than mine. It's just as good and it's nice and concise. What I like about Amra's writing here is Amra has just some really nice concise writing. Okay, now Amra, you might want to add if you're feeling like, okay, this is fairly straightforward. I'm writing quickly. I'm going to add a little bit more information. So add a little bit more information about those pastime activities. Okay. All right. So nice and clear. 
Um, Naimaksan says, maybe we should do one of these every day. Uh, Naimaksan, I wish I had the time to do it every day. Uh, we do do one every one or two weeks. Um, and there are lots of videos on the website in the premium course and examples, right? So remember that blog that I was showing you about the bar graph? So uh, if you're like, oh, I need more of these, Naimaksan, uh, definitely check out the blogs. Check out the other videos on the website, right? Okay. Saloni is asking, can we write in the passive voice? Um, very good question. So this is a good question by Saloni. Okay, uh, let's talk about that a little bit because that's a good question. Okay, um, so two kind of confusing uh, concepts in IELTS task one. One is uh, passive voice, when to write active, when to write passive voice. And the other one is, uh, should I use past, present, or future? Can we write in the passive voice, uh, should I use uh, past, present, or future? These are good questions. And the answers are always rooted in logic. Okay, it's not what your teacher said. We tend to have this bad approach. Well, it's not a bad approach. It's good to listen to teachers, but it's also good to question teachers, right? You should always question me like, Adrian, why are you saying that? And if I made a mistake, I should own up to it, right? It's good to, it's, it's important to own mistakes. Okay. Um, so let's go to this one. Can we write passive voice, passive or active? Okay. Here's a question. And this is very important. What is the general rule in academic and professional life? What is the general rule? Uh, for passive and active voice in academic and professional writing. You should know this, okay? It's a very important piece of knowledge. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're thinking English or any other language, it's the same if you have, especially if you have passive active grammar and most languages do have passive active grammar. There are very good reasons for it. Um, what's the rule in business in professional life and in academic life should you be writing about regarding this passive and active voice there is a rule okay and it's not adrian said or tom said or peter said or chris said it's the rule and there's a logical reason what is the rule when you're writing a persuasive essay a narrative expository it's kind of the same rule Same tip for IELTS. Guys, girls, IELTS is real English. It's real academic, real professional, real everyday English. Whatever the rule is in the real world is the same rule in IELTS, okay? Ghazi says, subject can be known or not known. Um, all right, Niazov said, should I write in passive to get a higher voice? That's not the right logic. Carolina has the answer. It's write active, okay? Active voice is expected whenever possible in uh, academic and professional writing. Why? Okay, so you should always use the active voice whenever possible in academic and professional writing and you will discover this very quickly when you're in university and you don't use it correctly your uh, professor or the assistant will circle sentences cross them out and say use active voice Ghazi has the answer Ghazi says because the subject can be known or not and we need to know who is responsible exactly Carolina uh, people want to know who is responsible for the action in the passive and active grammar we call it the agent of the action okay so um, I'll give you an example of this let's say chemistry uh, yeah let's do this example first so chemistry um, so uh, Radioactive materials were identified uh, in the 1800s. 
Okay. Um, this is passive, right? The question that remains here is who did it? Who did it? Who identified radioactive materials for radiology and for science? If you don't know who did it, then this is the correct sentence. If you know who did it, it's the wrong sentence. Okay? So if you do not know who did it, this is okay. But if you know, this is wrong. You need to give credit to that scientist. Okay? Okay? Now, if you know, then that's what you write. So you can say, uh, Mary Curie uh, identified radioactive materials in the 1800s. Okay, so this is the active, gives credit and responsibility to the scientist uh, or the agent of the action. Now, um, having said that, of course, there are situations, there are uh, often situations in task one where we do not know the agent of the action. So we use the passive voice, okay? And that's the logic of the passive and the active voice. If you know who's doing it, use the active voice. If you do not know who's doing it, use the passive voice. If you don't want your reader to know who's doing it, use the passive voice, right? So passive active voice are used with purpose, not for scores, not for because my teacher said, but they're used for reasons that are logical. Does that make sense, everybody, about passive active voice, okay? With the tense, it's the same. If the tense is in the past, if the table is in 2005 and you're talking about those people did that in 2005, then it's past tense, okay? All right, I can see a lot of people are like, okay, that makes sense. So there's logic for grammar, okay? Always stick to that, okay? Always think about that. So in this case, um, there are a lot of active sentences here because teens are watching TV. Not TV was watched by teens, but teens are watching TV or were watching TV if it's past tense. Okay. All right. Does that make sense? So here is the introduction. And after the introduction comes the overview. The overview should be a couple of sentences. Okay, uh, a couple of sentences that identify the most interesting, let's say, and obvious information without going into detail. For a band nine or a band eight, or even a band seven, you need to go beyond just most and least. Okay, it's one of the other very common mistakes in um, the IELTS is uh, students are like most people, least people, and then the examiner is reading like 100 essays that day, like. The most hours spent on any leisure activity was teens watching TV and videos in India. The least time spent on leisure activities is elderly people doing group exercise at zero hours average per year in India. Okay, next essay. The most hours spent on any leisure activity in India 
is teens watching TV and videos, 1,100. And the least hours, okay? Next one. The highest number of hours spent on any activity in India was watching. Okay, the next one. The greatest number of hours spent on... <laughs> Just imagine you're the that examiner and you're on essay number 35. <laughs> you're like, okay, let me guess. The most, right? The most hours. <laughs> Overview, the most hours. By this time, you're probably like, bah! Um, ready to jump out the window. <laughs> Just throw the essays, throw the essays. Um, so probably you're having an overload of the most, right? Okay, so try to be that student that kind of surprises the examiner where the examiner's like, wow, did that person just write a different observation than the most and the least, right? So being original can be good, especially if it's accurate. <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay, um, so let's take a look at that, all right? Let's take a look at what is maybe a little bit more than just the most and the least even I mean even a 10 year old can figure out most and least right and here don't forget a lot of you are 18 to 25 and you're doing this because you're going into university and you're going to do a job you need to go beyond the thinking of a 10 year old okay yeah, Mal says, I need to be much more intelligent than just most and the least, right? Um, so let's take a look. What is that? So what is that difference? Um, for that, when you're looking at a table, you might do some simple summation, okay? So you might realize, okay, here's watching TV. And if I look at this row, right, there are some really high numbers here. Like we're looking at the thousands of hours combined, right? Um, and then when we look at this row here, it's significantly less. This row here is significantly less. This row here is significantly less. And then we've got uh, cinema, which is way less, right? So we kind of have two very clear outliers, okay? Watching TV, that is a lot, okay? Um, and then we have these four here that kind of have a relatively, I don't want to say equal amount, but um, a similar or comparable amount of hours uh, when we're looking at all of the people or the population of India in their teens and adulthood. And then we have the cinema, which is uh, less, much less, right? overall. So for me, when I'm looking at this, and I don't really need to do a lot of number digging or looking at the numbers, I can see that just by looking at it, right? I can see that watching TV and videos is by far the most or by far the greatest number of hours for any age group. And cinema is relatively the least when looking at the total. Okay, the other three vary according to age groups, but have a comparable total amount. Does everybody see that observation? Okay, so that's kind of going beyond that 10, 11 year old mind and getting into the adult mind of looking at this data. Okay, everybody sees that? So here, what I would do for my overview so that when the examiner gets my essay and they go the most wait it doesn't say the most it says something different what what i'm gonna read this one um okay so uh here my overview would start with something like by let's say initially so starting right so initially, by observing the total numbers of each row, it becomes apparent that TV uh, watching was by far the, not fart, by far the most preferred or let's keep it present tense because we don't have the year, right? Is by far the most preferred leisure activity 
for teens to adults in India. Conversely, the least total hours spent on any pastime activity is going to the cinema. The other three categories, is it three or four? I think it's four. Yes, the other four. The other four uh, categories have comparable total hours for all ages combined, but a lot of variability when looking at individual age groups. Okay, this is your band nine um, overview. Okay, so read this overview one more time and then we'll look at the table and you'll be like, oh yeah. And then when the examiner is reading this, they're like, oh, is this a university student? Is this somebody doing their math? This has got to be somebody doing master's or PhD because the way they're writing, they're not just looking at, oh, there's 1,100 for TV, woohoo. Um, they're looking at the whole picture, right? Higher level students look at the whole picture. They don't just pick out one number, right? Okay, so take a look. Uh, initially, by observing the total numbers of each row, it becomes apparent that TV watching is by far the most preferred leisure activity for teens to adults in India. Conversely, the least total hours spent on any free activity is going to the cinema. The other four categories have comparable total hours for all ages combined, but a lot of variability when looking at individual age groups. Now, here I have my outline for the essay as well, so I know what I can write for the body paragraphs. And if I look back at this, I can see, oh yeah, okay, so there are those big numbers for watching TV. There are those little numbers for going to the cinema. And here are those numbers in the tens and the hundreds for these other four activities. A lot of information here. You don't have time to report each one of these numbers um, separately, okay? Kawaii STP8, or should I say cute STP8? Uh, I'm from Canada, if to answer that question for you. Okay. All right. Um, does that make sense? Does everybody see how here, when we're going for a band six versus a band nine, it's not just about the English. So it's not just about using good vocabulary and grammar, it's about content. Obviously, if it was just the English, then there would be a lot of band nines because a lot of people can write most, the highest number of hours was or is watching TV for teenagers. Okay, so a lot of people can write that correctly, grammatically and vocabulary wise, and everybody would get a band nine for that. Obviously, it's got to be more than just that, right? Yes, Amra says yes. Amra, you are right. Ghazi says yes. Okay, so now for the analyses, and this is why it's so important to have a good overview, the analyses, okay, analyses is plural for analysis. And keep writing, students. I'm looking at it. Cheryl's uh, Beck, I'm going to look at what you just wrote there a second in a second, okay? So keep that up. Okay, that's really good, okay? So the analyses basically follows your overview. Your overview is your thesis. So analyses follows the overview structure and gives more detail. Okay, this is why when you have a really good overview, you're going to have a really good essay and you're going to get a really good score. Okay, um, so here we talk about the TV watching as the most preferred leisure activity, okay? Uh, so that can be our one. Um, then we can mention the least hours going to the cinema. And then we can talk about, let's do that with a different color, 
Um, and then we can talk about the uh, variability of the other four categories for different age groups. Okay, so that's basically going to be the structure of our essay right there. One, two, three. Now we just have to look at the details. Okay, and again, this was a question that was on an IELTS exam or a similar question not so long ago, and this question was sent to us by a student, and I've never looked at this question before. I'm doing this with you right now for the first time. I'm just using strategy, understanding expository essays, understanding how to interpret and report data in a written format. Okay, all right, share is back. Okay, um, Shares back says, I just read Pavan's comment, that was funny. Um, all right, uh, Shares back says uh, this. Okay, Shares back, I think this is for the overview, it is. Okay, so Shares back says, in general, youngsters and elderly are likely to spend most of their time in front of TV and videos instead of visiting cinemas. Middle aged groups of people preferred gathering in a social scale this would be a band five it has assumptions it is detailed and it contains a few language mistakes like grammar and vocabulary so shares back this would be your band five level writing Okay, because you're not really seeing the whole information the same way that I did with my overview. Plus, you have some grammar mistakes. Plus, you're making some assumptions. Okay, you're saying that they're likely to spend. We don't know that. Uh, maybe uh, India has a TV blackout next year and they're not likely to spend any time uh, watching TV. Okay, all right, so it's practical. Angel. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, it's a 200 character limit, Angel. But you know, it's a good tip because uh, when we have the live, um, so Angel says it's really annoying that I only have 200 characters. I'm going to actually make a note for our developers. So this is our website here, aehelp.com. And for those people who have access to the premium version of our course, uh, that you get that by clicking the red button. Um, you have the my student account so in your my student account everybody we're adding this by the way you can get the premium course through YouTube by uh, going through Shopify we added the courses now to Shopify as well you just have to send us an email so I can activate your account I saw that there was somebody who just bought it um, like a couple hours ago through Shopify so I will activate that if you're watching I saw that and I will activate your account uh, we're going to uh, have live classes on our website so not through YouTube but directly through our website starting in October and Angel what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to our developers and I'm going to make the chat uh, part of the live class on the website to be like let's say three instead of 200 characters we'll make it 300 characters and I'm gonna make a note for myself right now because I agree that for some answers it's better I don't think it's good to make it more because then maybe people will write a lot of unnecessary information but I'm thinking 300 to 350 characters in the chat so I'm writing that down I will tell the developers and then you won't have that problem that you have on YouTube okay so it'll be more tailored for the IELTS for chat on uh, website live classes thank you for that tip see we listen we listen angel to our uh, students so um, I will do that okay because I think it makes sense just some pre why are you so upset Okay, Tatiana says 300 words. <laughs> All right, good. Okay, um, let's hop back here, okay? All right, so um, good, good. Now, uh, let's digress, okay? So when you write the analysis, this is the main part of your task one writing, you should identify the points. And I already kind of started that at the beginning of class. You saw that, right? So I'm going to write about watching TV. 
Although watching TV is the most popular for any age group for their leisure activity, it is two to three times more popular for people in their teens or in their 70 plus years uh, than the other age groups. That's my number one and I literally just said what I'm going to write. Okay. Um, and then instead of writing about socializing and these four, I'm going to leave those for now. I'm going to write about cinema. Okay. Um, cinema overall is the least popular and yet it seems to still be the most popular for teens and then ranges from just 20 hours for people in their 40s and 50s to uh, 70 hours for people in their 20s. Okay. So that's going to be my uh, second point. All right. Okay, good. So here I have my first and my second point identified. Um, what would be my third point? Okay, Fuang, for sure. No, it's it's happening. October live classes starting on the website for sure. So we're going to be we're doing a lot of testing in the next few weeks. Uh, the developers are on it. Um, okay, what would be my third point, everybody? So what would make sense to uh, do as my third point? So I showed you what I will do. The first and second point here, I think, are fairly straightforward. Once you realize what's going on. Um, what would be what would be a good one to do for number three? Which would you report? Socializing with four or less people, socializing with four or more people, individual exercise or group exercise? What would you do? Quran says, great. What would you do? Uh, Fuang, half, yeah. So Fuang says the similarities in the other four categories. The similarities and the differences, right? So right away, like always just use your eyes, <laughs> right? This is where some of you could throw in the, uh, the mask emoji of myself that I have there. Uh, use your eyes. So what pops out, right? Boom, those zeros, definitely. Zero. Um, what? Okay. Um, so zero pops out. So that one would get my attention. There's different ways to do it. I'm not telling you my way is the only correct structure. Uh, I'm just showing you one way that I think is effective and interesting for the reader. If I were doing a presentation, there's the mask guys. Yep. Fuang, Carolina, Same. Good. Thank you. Um, so we've got a couple of zeros there and then we've got a couple of boom, big numbers there, right? So that would be my point three, right? Because I think that's interesting to state that group exercise, interestingly, is not done at all, seemingly, by people 60 and over, but quite popular for people in their teens and 20s, right? What would be my point four? What would be my point four? If I just talked about group exercise, what would be my point for? What would be an interesting comparison or contrast here, right? Remember, again, high band essays, seven, eight, nine, they're interpreting data. You're going just not just by numbers. You're not just saying it's 400, the most, zero, the least. That's not interpretation. That's just reporting, okay? Yeah, very good, Shuhan, uh, Shuhana. Shauna Gomber says, well, it would make sense to then talk about individual exercise. Yeah, I agree 100%. Okay, those both are exercise, right? So um, the big difference with uh, individual exercise is everybody does it. And it seems to be a lot more balanced, right? So the variability, the range here is from uh, 40 to 110 instead of zero to 400, right? So the range variability is much less. So there's a much more kind of similar aspect there. So we can say conversely, it seems all age groups do at least some individual exercise throughout the year, ranging from 40 to 175 hours, right? So that would be my number four. And then uh, my number five would be this one. And my number six would be this one. We'll get into those in just a moment. Anahita says, can't we combine some of these categories? You could, Anahita. Um, Angel says, it seems the most lazy group is 40. Angel, that is a terrible assumption to make. Why? <laughs> so 
this is where you have to be really careful. This is why, uh, Angel, we say that you cannot make personal opinions in expository essays. And Angel, I'm going to use this as an example here. So this is a very bad assumption to make from this graph. Your professor in university would hammer you for this one. Okay. This is highly flawed and invalid. You would be in trouble in university. Why? Exactly. Amra says maybe <laughs> they are too busy with work, children, and school for these leisure activities. So arguably, uh, Angel, the reason why we don't see high numbers for people in their 40s here is because they're so busy with their responsibilities that they don't have time. So calling them lazy would be like, uh, did you just call your mom and dad lazy who are working from 8 o'clock till 5 p.m., then cooking dinner, cleaning the house, and then trying to... Um, help with the homework because they're not watching TV and going to the cinema angel oh, you're in trouble okay <laughs> so you have to be careful right you can't make assumptions in, in uh, data okay all right um, so be careful um, okay uh, so uh, let's get back to this number one so now that we know what we're doing it's a step by step okay step by step number one is watching TVs okay so watching TV, let's do it. This is number one. Okay, you don't have to, put, don't put the numbers like this. I'm just doing this so that you um, you are clear what's going on here. Okay, I'm trying not to, I don't want, okay, there we go. Uh, so number one, right? Um, although, uh, TV watching, was done more by all age groups, teens and people over 70. And let's keep it pe present tense, right? So I'm always uh, keeping in mind the uh, present tense here right because we don't have the year we don't know if it's past so although TV watching uh, is done now here I have passive um, and I'm mentioning the agent of the action so it's okay in this case to use the passive but you could do it actively and it is better so you could do it like this although teens and uh, seniors over uh, 70 uh, watched or watch uh, TV the most um, at two to three times the hours of other age groups, 1100 hours per year and thousand hours per year so here notice how I'm truncating hours and years um, because I want to save as much time energy and words for content as I can so I'm not writing words for 1100 or even hours and years I'm just using abbreviations okay and that's a very good idea for high bands in expository writing like this so although teens and seniors over 70 watch TV the most at two to three times the hours of other age groups, 1,100 hours and 1,000 hours uh, per year, respectively, it is still the most popular pastime activity for ages uh, 20 to uh, 60 whereby each spend hundreds of hours in front 
of the tube annually. Okay, now I'm writing this at the band nine level grammatically with vocabulary. So I'm pushing you for these complex compound sentences. If you can't do these yet, don't worry. Just focus on reporting the same content using two, three sentences, using simpler grammar, simpler vocabulary. It can be done in a simpler way, okay? And you will still get a high band score. So that's my first sentence, and that defines this entire point one, okay? So although teens and seniors over 70 watch TV the most at two to three times the hours of other age groups, 1100 and 1000 hours yearly, respectively, it is still the most popular pastime activity for ages 20 to 60, whereby each spend hundreds of hours in front of the tube annually. Okay, tube uh, here means TV. Um, there are a few different ways to say television in English, some slang words um, and some synonyms. The tube is one way to say TV, okay, or television, or the telly, as British people often call the TV, the telly. Okay, uh, now opposite, um, cinema, conversely. Conversely, and this is my second point, right? So this is point two. Uh, conversely, going to a, a movie theater um, is the uh, least time consuming. Now I don't say popular because it's not necessarily that it's not popular. Maybe people don't go because it's expensive or they don't have time. Um, so it's least time consuming. It's a nice collocation. Pay attention to words like time consuming. Ghazi, I love how you're writing. Keep that up. Okay. So conversely, going to the movie theater is the least time consuming. And notice how that makes sense because TVs and movies, they're both film. Uh, conversely, going to a movie theater is the least time consuming for each uh, age group ranging from ninety or we should always start with the lower number, 20, 20 for people in 40s and 50s, ranging from 20 hours per year uh, for Indians in their 40s and 50s to 90 hours uh, per year for teens, okay? And that's it, that's my second point. Okay, first point, second point. So far, so good, everybody's with me. Uh, Ghazi has this sentence for us. Ghazi, good, I'm happy that you're back, you're fully act, uh, actively participating, it's great, that's how you're going to do well in your upcoming IELTS exam in a month, good for you. So, um, first of all, people like to watch TV where teens spend a thousand hours uh, who constitute the highest rate of other groups. Uh, the age group 70 plus spend in the second position. We don't need that. Ghazi, you need to be a little bit more concise. You're just going through like A, B, C, D structure. And especially if you're making grammar mistakes with that, it gets a low score because it's too typical. It's a very typical type of writing. So the examiner is just skimming through, looking for mistakes and marking it a band five or a six, depending on how many mistakes you have. They're not even really paying attention to the content because it's just the same as the other guys or the other girls, right? So you want to go beyond uh, that, okay? So first of all, people like to watch TV where teens and elderly uh, spend a thousand one hundred hours and a thousand hours respectively and the other age groups spend dot 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 right and let's make that a little bit better okay and take the rest of that out all right Okay, now uh, we are going to jump into the next one, okay? So group exercise sport, okay? And individual exercise. 
interestingly, because it is interesting to see this 400, 300 here for teens and 20s and nothing for 60s and 70 plus for group, right? Can you imagine 70 year old grandpa playing um, rugby? Smack, crash, oh, my back, my back. I think I'm gonna quit this rugby team next year. No, I'm not, I'm gonna play. There's probably a reason for that, but we don't know the reason, so let's not say that, right? Angel says, why not? Why not play rugby at 70? Well, a broken leg means like, you know, four or five years of, uh, of limping, right? It's just a, a little bit harder to heal with injury, and group sports tend to have more injury. But again, we can't say that, right? We can't say people in India don't like group sports because they get injured more, right? They don't like to get play cricket because if they get hit, then they have a bruise for two years, right? We don't say that, right? We don't know that. Okay, All right, so we just report what we know, which is the interesting aspect here. <laughs> Elizabeth says broken hips. Hopefully not, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so number three. <clears throat> Interestingly, the greatest diversity in time spent <clears throat> on a leisure activities is group exercise teens and then comma definition uh, teens and young adults right 20s young adults uh, spend three to four hundred three hundred to four hundred hours a year playing team sports but seniors uh, those over 60 spend no time in uh, such behaviors Okay, that's really interesting. Now, uh, compare that to individual exercise, right? So for those of you who are just joining in, we identified these points earlier so we can write about them nice and quick. This is why it's so important in task one to identify uh, earlier your key points, okay? So individual exercise. Here I would link, what's, what, what kind of a word would link this? So what kind of a connective word or a linking word? So here we have this point. Interestingly, the greatest diversity in time spent on leisure activities is group exercise. Teens and young adults spend three to 400 hours a year playing team sports, but seniors, those over 60, uh, spend no time in such behavior, okay, or such behaviors. Um, what would be, uh, it's present tense, Shuhana, because we don't have the year. So we only use the past participle if it's a passive or present perfect. Um, so here, what would be a great way to connect? What, what kind of a connective could I use for the individual sports? What would we use to connect? Ghazi says, conversely, watching cinema. That's a little bit earlier, Ghazi. Ravi says, moreover. I wouldn't use moreover here. So uh, let me show you the connection here. Some of you are thinking, what is he trying to connect? So notice how with group exercise, we've got this really big range, zero to three, four hundred. But here in individual exercise, it's kind of the opposite. We don't have that range. We have 40 right to 175 the range is much narrower so I wouldn't use furthermore or additionally here I'm it's not I'm not just adding information here Anahita says however however is better there's a there's a word that works better here so Fuang says conversely Rumbik says English is hard Rumbik it's not just English that we're dealing with here it's academic English and academic language in any any culture can be challenging for sure 
Amra says, in contrast, alternatively, significantly, this is a tricky one. It's a tough question that I'm asking you. I know it's a tough question. So I'm just uh, seeing if anybody picks it up like, oh, yeah, that word would. Okay. So this is where we have a contrast, right? Because the time that they're spending is different, but they're both kind of exercise. When you have a contrast with similar categories, a really good connective word to use, everybody listening, is nevertheless, okay? Because we're dealing with exercise, but at the same time. So you have, it's like opposite, but still in the same category. And in that case, we would use nevertheless as one word. Nevertheless, individual exercise Uh, is more balanced among the age groups ranging from 40 hours a year to 175 hours per year. And then here, if I wanted to be a little bit more specific, I could say, uh, 40 hours for people in their 50s, 175 for those in their 30s and 40s, right? Um, so 40 hours, and then I could bracket this, uh, Indians in their 50s to 175 hours, Indians in their uh, 30s and 40s. Okay, so that's where, I mean, the the bracket part, the parentheses part, that's for those band nine uh, level candidates. Otherwise, you know, don't worry about it too much. So this was uh, three, this was four. Okay, um, and uh, now um, I have a nice, clear, useful interpretation of the data. Okay, uh, watch with me. Okay, see how these two sentences read together. Interestingly, the greatest diversity in time spent on leisure activities is group exercise. Teens and young adults spend 300 to 400 hours a year playing team sports, but seniors, those over 60, spend no time in such behaviors. Nevertheless, individual exercise is more balanced among the age groups, ranging from 40 hours, Indians in their 50s, to 175 hours, Indians in their 30s to 40s. Okay, makes sense? Okay, everybody, does that make sense? All right, Hassan, paying attention. To make that improvement, okay. See how that nevertheless connects that those concepts very well, right? Okay, now, um, Anahita had a good question before. Anahita says, can I combine uh, these um, categories? This is where you need to do a time check, okay? So if I'm running out of time and I'm getting close to 20 minutes of writing, okay, then I need to go, uh oh, I don't have a lot of time left for talking about socializing with four or more people or less than four people. And so uh, I might need to try to combine these two categories. Okay. And I can do that. So I can combine them. I just have to think how, right? I, how can I quickly, easily combine these rather than trying to describe these individually? Okay, so again, we have the same kind of dichotomy, it means two separate groups, as with uh, group exercise and individual exercise. This is high level band nine interpretation. Notice that socializing with four or more people is much more popular with teens, just like group exercise. Oh, what a surprise. Group exercise, socializing with four people or more. Teens, right? 20s, it's all about friends. 
getting together with a ton of people, ton of friends, right? And then notice individual exercise, right? And socializing with four or less people. Oh, look at that. Not so much time by teens and 20s, but more time with those mid groups, right? Just like here, okay? Surprise, surprise. If you're in sociology or psychology, like my major, those would be the data that you're looking for, okay? That's where it's getting really interesting. So we could say similarly, okay? So watch how I can combine those two, Anahita, and finish up this essay nice and fast with high level writing. Similarly, to exercise. A synonymous dichotomy can be observed for Indians who socialize with less than or more than four people. What does it mean? Semicolon. Teens and young adults spend more time with four plus groups as where there is a greater balance um, spending time with less than four people. Okay, and that's all I write. And you could do that in an even simpler way. I'm just again showing you this kind of band nine level writing. Okay, it's all one paragraph here so far and I'm roughly at about 220 words. Okay, at a, again, band nine here, right? So now if I've got one more minute left, I'm going to give a summary, okay? Um, in summary, by adding together the columns, it becomes apparent that and this is where you can get really fancy and the IELTS examiner is just going to be like mind blown. They're going to be like, really? Did I just read an essay that looked at this table from these perspectives and not just most and least, most and least, right? So another quick look that you can have and tables are, that's what we use tables for, right? So we look at these columns. We look at totals of columns. And some of you are like, well, what? This is just IELTS. Well, yes, it is just IELTS. But if you're going for a band eight or band nine, it's not just IELTS. It's literally your ticket to working as a doctor, working as a nurse, working as an engineer, getting into your master's program, your PhD. It's not an ESL test, everyone. It's not an English as a second language exam. That's what you have to forget that if you're going for those high band scores, you have to look at it differently. Okay. Um, so that's, I think, the, one of the biggest issue with a lot of people teaching IELTS online is they keep teaching it like it's just some ESL exam. It's not, okay? And that leads to a lot of headache for many people. Um, if we look at these, right, we look at these columns, uh, there's, a, there's a piece of data, and we don't need to add it. So we, you don't need to actually, I don't, you know, well, uh, time's up. Why don't you just add it to the, the columns? No, you don't need to add the numbers. Okay, I don't. I don't expect you to have like the exact number here. Um, just get an eye shot. Okay, clearly when we look at these columns, um, you can see you don't Mal. You don't need the summary. The summary in university should be a paragraph on its own, but in the IELTS it should not be because the IELTS they don't expect the summary. So they find it strange if somebody writes a separate summary paragraph. So just combine it, just add it to the end. Um, <clears throat> so just, yeah, it doesn't, if you did it as a separate paragraph, it doesn't hurt, it shouldn't hurt, but you can just add it at the end, okay? Um, so what I can summarize here, what I can clearly see here, just by kind of 
each looking at these numbers really quickly is, and I hope everybody else can too, um, is that uh, these two groups, the total is way higher than these groups. Okay, so you can see that teens and 20s just seem to have more leisure time, okay, in India. So, uh, in summary, by adding together <clears throat> the columns, it becomes apparent uh, that <clears throat> teens and young adults uh, seem to have the most uh, leisure time in India, and uh, these uh, free time activities definitely vary greatly by each uh, according to each age group okay so that would be my summary all right there you go make sense right everybody can see that right so that should jump out so remember summation is really good with tables it makes sense for a lot of tables to quickly just do a rough count or rough estimate of the rows and the columns summation everybody see that everybody got that yeah okay all right Amal I do know that in our course we tell people to write a separate summary but since then we've changed it and we're gonna upgrade our course and tell people to just include it, it doesn't have to be separate okay so this is the original question and here's the answer and there's probably a reason why um, this student asked us to write about this table because if you look at this table then you kind of see like okay there's a lot of numbers and a lot of candidates right away will be looking for the most and the least but when you're looking at this table you kind of start thinking like there's not a lot of value writing about the mo most and the least like you don't really get a lot out of this it's just it seems like nonsense information to be like most second most third most fourth most and it's kind of like yeah but what's the use of that or why you know it's kind of just random so I have a feeling that this candidate was probably like I felt that there was some missing concepts or information that I should be looking at here so here's the question the following table gives information about the time spent on various leisure activities in a country according to age groups report the main features and make comparisons where relevant okay there's our table here's our response this table provides data on the number of hours seven different age groups ranging from teens to over 70 years old spent on six or spend here on six different leisure activities in a given year in India. And we don't even need the in a given year, just in India. The age groups span a decade each and the pastime behaviors vary from watching TV to group exercise sport. Sure. Initially, by observing the total numbers of each row, it becomes apparent that TV watching is by far the most preferred leisure activity for teens to adults in India. Conversely, the least total hours spent on any free time activity is going to the cinema. The other four categories have comparable total hours for all ages combined, but a lot of variability when looking at individual age groups. Although teens and seniors over 70 watch TV the most at two to three times the hours of other age groups, 1,100 to 1,000 hours a year respectively, it is still the most popular pastime activity for ages 20 to 60, where each spend hundreds of hours in front of the tube annually. Conversely, going to a movie theater is the least time consuming for each age group ranging from 20 hours a year for Indians in their 40s and 50s to 90 hours a year for teens. Interestingly, the greatest diversity in time spent on leisure activities is group exercise. Teens and young adults spend three to 400 hours a year playing team sports, but seniors, those over 60, spend no time in such behaviors. Nevertheless, individual exercise is more balanced among the age groups ranging from 40 hours a year, Indians in their 50s, to 175 hours a year, Indians in their 30s and 40s. Similarly to exercise, a synonymous dichotomy can be observed for Indians who socialize with less than or more than four people. 
teens and young adults, spend more time with four plus groups as where there is a greater balance spending time with less than four individuals. In summary, by adding together the columns, it becomes apparent that teens and young adults seem to have the most leisure time in India, and these free time activities definitely uh, vary, or just vary, uh, greatly according to each age group. All right, that's your band nine essay. Now, if you did this at home, and you're like, that's awesome, I have the perfect essay, woohoo! You can still go back and make it more concise. So you can think about, okay, how can I make this even shorter so that when I'm in the exam, I can do it as fast as possible and make it as short as possible and as awesome as possible and get that band nine. Okay. Ghazi, it's totally okay to use the word spend like this. Okay. And you can paraphrase it if you remember, take time, give time, use time. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so always uh, reach for the stars, students. Reach for the stars for lots more uh, examples and videos and explanations of uh, Academic IELTS Task 1. Uh, go to our website, aehelp.com. Again, these websites power these live classes. Uh, so go to aehelp.com. Uh, sign up for the premium course. Uh, the homepage will look like this, although that's also being updated over the next little while but it will look like this for now um, so you just click that big red button you can also uh, get the course through Shopify via the YouTube channel click that red button there um, and uh, for general out students it's the green background click that red button there we're an IDP affiliate British Council partner we're world leaders if you look at a lot of the other content that comes out they seem to have very similar content coming out after we produce content um, so anyway <laughs> Check out the website, sign up uh, for those courses. They don't cost much and you only need to pay one time and use it as long as you want. And then like Ghazi, right, um, who signed up, you can just come back and keep using it when you need it. That's why we don't do subscription because people realize later, oh, I need to do the IELTS again. Oh, I still have access to that course. Awesome. Oh, and they keep updating it. So there's new information. There's new pieces there. Great. Okay. So... Students, have an awesome rest of your Friday. Uh, see you tomorrow. We'll have uh, speaking part two, part three tomorrow. So uh, make sure you come back for that. Check out the websites. Sign up for the websites so you can use them forever if you need to do ever the IELTS again in the future. Thank you for the participation, members, subscribers. That was great. I look forward to conversing with you and helping you further in tomorrow's class. Much love to all of you. Thanks, Amra. Thanks, Carolina. Bye for now, everyone.